to solve the world's growing water crisis, we're making one of our biggest bets yet. This is giant sprawling desalination plants that turn salty oceans into fresh drinkable water. For the billions of people who experience severe water scarcity for at least one month each year, these facilities are a lifeline. They look like progress, innovation, and above all hope. But there's a catch. For every litre of fresh water these plants make, they create roughly another litre and a half of this, a toxic, super salty sludge called brine. And right now, we just dump most of it straight back into the sea where the dense, chemical-laden liquid can do immense harm to marine ecosystems. It's the dirty secret of clean water, a massive environmental problem we've created while trying to solve another problem. But what if that toxic sludge is actually the secret ingredient for the cheap, powerful and safe batteries EVs and national grids around the world desperately need? What if the solution to our energy future has been hiding in the waste from our water desalination plants all along? Well, it's a paradox that could change everything. Well, to see how we stumbled into this, you first have to understand desalination. The most popular method is reverse osmosis. Think of it like the world's most sophisticated coffee filter. Seawater is forced at incredibly high pressure through a membrane with pores so tiny that water molecules can pass through, but the larger salt molecules and other impurities get left behind. It's an immensely energy hungry but effective process. And it's a booming industry. From the Middle East to California, these plants are scaling up to meet the crushing demand for fresh water. But as they grow, so does the brine problem. This isn't just slightly saltier water, it's hyper-concentrated saline solution, often up to twice as salty as the ocean, and it also contains a cocktail of chemicals used in the treatment process. When it's pumped back into the sea, this heavy brine will sink and spread, smothering organisms on the sea floor and changing the chemistry of coastal waters. Well, for decades, engineers have seen this brine as nothing more than a well, liability, a toxic byproduct to be managed, diluted, and pff, disposed of as discreetly as possible. Costs money to treat and money to pump away, adding to the already steep price of desalinated water. The brine was, for all intents and purposes, the villain of our clean water story. But it turns out we might have been looking at it all wrong. Now hold that thought about toxic brine and let's pivot for a moment to another monumental challenge, energy storage. Our modern world runs on batteries. They're in our phones, our laptops and increasingly our cars, our homes and the national grid. The reigning tech, lithium iron, has been a game changer. But it has a dirty secret of its own. Lithium is often called white gold, and for good reason. It is a finite source, and mining it can be environmentally destructive. A huge slice of the world's lithium, not to mention other critical battery metals like cobalt and nickel, come from uh, just a handful of countries, creating fragile and often ethically fraught supply chains. And that's why the major manufacturers have been switching away from NMC, which is nickel manganese cobalt batteries, into LFP, which use no nickel or cobalt. And as we all know, lithium ion batteries can be temperamental. They don't love extreme temperatures and can carry a risk of thermal runaway. It's a fancy term for saying they catch fire. Well, to truly make the switch to a world powered by renewables like solar and wind, we need something better. And Tesla has already patented a new method for extracting lithium from the ground that uses, yeah, you guessed it, salt. And that results in a 35% cost reduction and far less environmental impact. But going one step further, we need batteries that are cheap, made from an abundant material, safe, long-lasting and environmentally friendly. 
For years, I've been the holy grail of energy research. This is where our two stories, the toxic brine and the hunt for a better battery, unexpectedly collide. So what if the answer to our battery problem was hiding in the very waste from our water solution? The breakthrough idea is surprisingly elegant. What is desalinated brine? It's just highly concentrated salt water. And what's salt water? Yeah, mostly it's just sodium chloride, good old table salt. Well, as it turns out, sodium is the sixth most abundant element on Earth, and it's cheap. It's everywhere, and its chemical properties are incredibly similar to lithium's. And this has sparked the rapid development of a new kind of battery, the sodium ion battery. CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer in China, and Tesla, amongst others, have been working away on sodium ion batteries for years, and they have both had recent breakthroughs. The basic idea is almost identical to a lithium ion battery. Just think of it like a rocking chair, it moves sodium ions from one electrode to another to charge and back again to release the power. But instead of expensive scarce lithium, it uses cheap abundant sodium. This isn't just a theory, it's happening right now. CATL has just launched its Nextra second generation second sodium batteries, with mass production for some models slated for 2025. Now these batteries are much safer. While not entirely fireproof, they are much less prone to thermal runaway than lithium iron. And they also perform much better across a wider range of temperatures. CATL claim a 90% efficiency at minus 40 centigrade and safe operation up to plus 70. And it has a life expectancy of 10,000 cycles all while achieving an energy density of about 175 watt hours per kilogram, it's about the same as LFP. And the most beautiful part, the raw material could come directly from the problematic brine that desalination plants are currently paying to get rid of. This is the kind of accidental circular economy solution the scientists dream about, an environmental liability transformed into a critical asset. It's a powerful idea. And before we dive into what a future powered by salt water could look like, just take a moment to subscribe if you're enjoying this video. We're always exploring the surprising science that's shaping our world, and you won't want to miss what's next. Now, it's not quite as simple as just pumping brine into a battery case. <laughs> that brine is a complex chemical soup. To be used in most of today's sodium ion battery designs, the sodium chloride first needs to be extracted and purified. That means more energy, more processing steps, which adds cost and complexity. And that's a big hurdle, but there are a few pathways where this synergy makes a ton of sense. Well, the first of these is getting the sodium chloride, the salt, through solar evaporation. Desalination plants could divert their brine into large ponds, using the sun's heat to evaporate the water and leave behind the pure crystallised salt. It's an ancient low-tech method, could be adapted to create feedstock for modern battery manufacturing. But even more exciting is the development of battery chemistries that are less picky about their ingredient. For example, a type of high temperature molten salt battery, sometimes called a zebra battery, actually uses sodium chloride as a key po component directly. But the most futuristic vision is a technology called seawater battery. Yeah. Researchers are developing systems that are both a desalination unit and a battery in one. These experimental devices use the flow of ions during the charge and discharge cycles of the battery to separate salt from water, effectively producing fresh water and storing energy at the same time. Imagine a coastal facility that doesn't just produce clean water, but also acts as a massive grid-scale battery, storing excess solar and wind power. It's a truly integrated solution. Recent advances are pushing the boundaries of what's possible, with some lab prototypes 
demonstrating incredible cycle life. So let's paint a picture of this future. Imagine a world where coastal communities are no longer just consumers of energy and water, but producers of both. A desalination plant is no longer just a water factory with a waste problem. It's a dual purpose facility. It generates fresh water and its byproduct brine becomes the fuel for a co-located battery factory. And this creates a powerful synergy. The revenue from selling sodium for batteries could help offset the high cost of desalination, making fresh water more affordable. The cost of sodium ion batteries would drop even further, speeding up the adoption of electric vehicles and renewable energy storage. It turns a linear, wasteful process into a sustainable, circular one. We would literally be drinking the ocean and using the leftovers to power our cities and cars. However, we do need to stay grounded. The future isn't a sure thing. Right now, the biggest barrier is, as always, economics. The cost of extracting and purifying salt from brine still has to compete with the cost of mining it from the ground, which is already incredibly cheap. And lithium is also incredibly cheap. Plus, you've got the cost of sodium itself. It's only a small fraction of a finished battery's price. You'll need to take into account performance, manufacturing scale and lifespan. They're much bigger drivers of the actual end cost. And while all-in-one seawater batteries are incredibly promising, they are still very much just at the start of their journey from the research and development phase to the mass-produced integration into our everyday EVs and grid batteries. Scaling them up from lab prototypes to industrial sized plants is a huge engineering challenge that will take more years and some serious investment. So the question we have to ask is, is it worth it? Is the environmental benefit of eliminating brine discharge worth the extra energy and cost to turn it into a resource? What do you think? Is this the biggest hurdle for the technology, the cost? Or is it the science or the engineering? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Well, the story of saltwater batteries is a perfect example of how real innovation actually happens. It's very rarely a single Eureka moment. It's more often it's just a slow convergence of two seemingly unrelated problems. For decades, we've been trying to solve the water crisis with desalination and the energy crisis with better batteries. The idea that the waste from one could be the key to the other is a powerful shift in perspective. It actually forces us to rethink what we consider waste. That toxic brine we saw as a threat might just be an asset in disguise. While we're still years away from desalination plants directly powering battery factories on a large scale, and even further away from powering our desalination plants from the electricity stored by sodium ion batteries, the path is becoming clear. Companies are already scaling up sodium ion production. It's on its way. And researchers are pushing the limits of what seawater batteries can do. They're getting more powerful. They're getting more energy dense. Well, the journey from accidental discovery to a world powered by salt water will be long and challenging, but it represents a profound and elegant possibility that the very element that makes our oceans undrinkable might just hold the key to a future of abundant, sustainable energy for everyone. Well, if this video made you look at a glass of water a little differently, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. I'm Dave.